Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Heat to Tahitian County if I can get that out correctly. <laughs> um we are in the middle of a massive vineyard because we have expanded our uh well plantation for what it's worth. Um because you know saying vineyard again would be a little re repetitive to me and yeah. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, we are working on cultivating this up. It doesn't quite do anything. If I can, there we go. As you can see there, that's a pass we've already done. That's another pass there that we will need to get to, a couple of them. I'm doing every third because that's kind of what works out with this turning radius of this particular tractor. Let me go to the outside view. Oh, forgot we were up that high. But actually, it's good view. Uh, to the right of us, you can see that we've already done two passes. To the left, you can see that we've only done one pass. So, and you can also see that it's a massive field. <laughs> I may come through, like, in the middle and put a run down through the middle just to kind of break it up. Uh, I don't know exactly how it's going to work per se, and I may do that like when it comes to harvest, because I don't know if we will be able to get one full pass with the harvester. Even if one we have one that does have a uh, crazy capacity. <laughs> and over there we have olives. I don't have anything currently, to my knowledge, without just selling the olives directly, to uh, deal with that. So, that's one thing that I'm hoping we can figure out today. I just don't know where I'm going to put it offhand. Because um, we kind of are running out of space over here. And we do have a few other pieces of equipment. I'm treating the vineyard kind of like its own entity almost. Even though it is part of our original farm. Uh, nothing's too going on too crazy. We are in the beginning parts of November. Almost middle of November, I'll put it that way. Uh, November 2nd out of 5 days. So, yeah. <laughs> I think it's five days. Maybe it's four. Uh, I don't remember. And that's the downside to having a couple different uh, maps going. But, um, yeah, so I kind of have bought, you know, some other pieces of equipment. Well, I, the only other piece of equipment I needed for the olives was the harvester. I can use everything else. And this is kind of a, since we're talking about it, this is kind of a unique sit setup here. Because we are cultivating, yes, but it doesn't really do anything with the grass that's growing. Basically, with the way it's designed in game, is once the grass grows up, grows tall enough, like you know, it is around the boundary, that's when you come through with a mulcher. Hello, train. If you guys heard that, I'm sure you did. If you didn't, I'd be surprised. I do have a window open that. Uh, is letting us beautiful fresh air that's, you know, lower 70s. I'm pretty sure low humidity as well. I am trying to talk a little closer to the microphone in case that train horn is a little loud. So if I am got a little louder, I apologize. I'm not trying to blow your speakers out. I promise. Um, but yeah, with the way this works out is the piece in the front, as you can see, cultivates around the... Um, the poles and the plants. And it that's all it does. I mean, we could technically get away with doing that, you know, once once a year type of deal. But it kind of I don't exactly understand the concept behind it. Oop, as we get to the end of the field. But the cultivator in the back is what's getting the rest of it. Oop, did not mean to go in reverse. So the olives I have spaced a little bit closer again I just kind of went with what I could uh, I've never done them before so I may have to go through and adjust things later on down the road again similar to the olives let me did not mean to hit the horn we'll go with that so This, if you remember, this was all one big massive field. I just tried to eyeball it and I split it in half. So this half is the olives. This one is, or I'm sorry, this is the grapes. This is the olives. Right now we just have 
our grape processing center. I do want to get a olive processing center, so let me not worry about that right now because we're not in the right screen. Uh, 117, we, as we own, I did actually make adjustments to it with uh, plowing to try to make it a little bit easier. And 121, we've also expanded quite a bit. Um, we've removed, for both of these fields, we have removed quite a bit of trees, quite a bit of shrubs, bushes, what have you, um, just so we can kind of make it a little bit easier on ourselves, plus expand our fields. Uh, these two fields are part of our original farm. I'm not going to worry about making them part of this. Um, I started doing 116 with olives, kind of thinking I might do it all as olives. The more I thought about it, the more I went, yeah, we'll split it. <laughs> so that's the idea there. Um, we should have, what's that? Is that something that, no, I think I know where, because I need to come over in this area and kind of clean things up, remove trees, kind of like what, with what I did with the other field, and kind of make it a little bit nicer so we, that way we don't have just this little uh, divot thing just kind of causing issues. Um, I may either come across here and down through like that, but that's going to require cutting down a lot of trees. And we that might be a, a winter project. I don't know yet. Uh, 125, I have, yeah, I planted as grass. So, don't pay attention to 124. That should be, one's not on this one. Alfalfa, that's right. I did that as alfalfa, and I think, I, the one thing that's irritating me lately is the fact that yeah, I got a little spot of wheat. One thing that I've been having some irritations with is if you exit out of game and you come back or your machine shuts off and then you go to restart it, it sets it back to the original one. At least what that's what the issue I've been having lately. So I came back. I didn't realize that it was set to wheat. And uh, I almost got an entire strip done in wheat before I realized what was going on, because I was looking at the uh, application of fertilizer going, man, we're really dumping a lot of fertilizer in this spot, because the uh, planter that I was using um, also applies fertilizer. I thought, that's kind of odd, and I, so I stopped things, and I looked at everything and went, oh, we are apparently planting wheat, not alfalfa. So, yeah, that's what happened with that. Yeah, the noises you're hearing are these little fingers, if I can get. Yeah, like those fingers there on the uh, sides of the this piece that are... I don't know if it just kind of helps if it's designed to ke keep the tractor in the center. It doesn't really do that great of a job, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what it is. And maybe it, it's part of the plow that when they turn, they kind of get around the plant. Uh, so they kind of till up the ground around the plant and the stakes without destroying those. Again, I'm not very familiar. I just play a farmer on TV. But... And then, so, I ended up going with this because, you know, if I'm going to do that, I'm at least for the very first time, because as you can tell, we did spread lime. Uh, that's what the white stuff is on the field uh, so I'm just trying to get that tilled in it is definitely out of season um, harvest season for uh, grapes just ended last month so and I finally got the vines out of our shed too over there across the road I inadvertently kind of removed a little too much so we, we don't have any like just outside just there in front as you can see because about where that green tractor is, one of our new pieces of equipment, by the way, um, that was kind of where we had the uh, vines coming basically straight out of the barn. <laughs> because at that time, I wasn't 100% certain how to remove them. 
So, yeah. When I was placing these, I figured out how to remove them, so I gave it a shot and it worked. So, and I didn't even have to remove the barn to do it. So it looks a little bit better up there now. Um, I don't know, just kind of the way it works out right now. And unfortunately I have lubricating grease on one of these implements. I don't remember which one. I haven't had a chance to, re or I keep forgetting to do it or you know stop at the end of the field but now that I'm recording I'm not gonna worry about it until after I stop recording and then I forget about it again <laughs> but I will pause when we get to the end of this field because this isn't exactly what I wanted to be doing for the entire video today yeah it's interesting with the way the equipment works out I'm learning as I go I've had, I've tried actually several different pieces of equipment to see what works, what I like, what I don't. And I still have a couple pieces up there that I'm going to kind of give it a shot. I think one of the other ones that I have is similar to this front implement that it kind of goes around the plants and the uh, stakes. So, but this is just going so well for me. I, don't, I haven't really wanted to change it out because I know this is working. At least with the way I like it. But, like I said, we're going to get to the end of this, this field. Like I said, these are long rows. And I don't know if these long rows are actually, you know, worthwhile for the way the game goes. But, well, considering, you know, how very little it seemed like our harvester was filled up just by those two dinky fields, I figure I'd at least give it a shot like this. Worst case, if it's long if these are too long to where we can't even do a full single pass without um filling up then yeah Ugh. get up and around here that is a little bit of an incline too so and we're just going to get this lined up for the most part for our next pass I'm just glad the collisions are, uh, they're there, but I'm just glad they're very lenient. I'll put it that way. So yeah, we are driving a McCormick 120 or X4.120F. I don't know. Um, I was looking for a tractor that had a front, uh, attachment. So this is the first one I found that was a decent price. So. That's what we're working with. So I love the fact that, and then this is just me griping, so take it for what it is. They call this a winery, yet the game doesn't allow us to actually make wine. And all honesty, it, in my opinion, it should say Tahitian County Vineyard. But that's just me. So I found this older tractor because I was looking for something for us to be able to use so we can have, get a bat wing and be able to mow our property, uh, ditches and whatnot. And I found this. John Deere 710. It's, I believe this is old enough that it's kind of, I don't know if, if it's Deutsch or Lance. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> But this is old enough that I, and it just looks awesome, honestly. I thought about going with the, uh, like, a cab, like a roof on it, but you don't really get the back lights. This is the only way with this particular tractor that you can get the lights. So, yeah. And with that... Yeah, with the front, uh, or with the, uh, I almost called it a front attacher. With this part here, <laughs> why am I having a brain fart? We also do have a set of forks. So at least that way we have forks over here. And as you can see here, we now have full use of our shed. Um, so we have our grape harvester. And then we have our olive har harvester. So, that kind of works out for us. And then to kind of do some of the detail work, we do have a trimmer and we do have a rider mower with its own 
Um, I, mean, I keep wanting to call it a detachment. Front end loader thing. Um, with this snow plow that we have over by the other uh, building. But this one we have set up kind of to bag. Just so we can kind of do the nice clean work around the uh, buildings. Kind of clean things up and make it look nice and neat. So. And we do have a, manu a manure spreader. I... I I don't know what language that is, but that just kind of looks wrong to me. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I think I, I, there's another one that we could have gotten, but I just kind of like the look of this one. It's unique. And I did change the side, so that wasn't near as big. But, yeah, with the way this is for the vineyards, is it comes out these little scoop looking things on each side so it basically applies it directly to where it's needed on the plants because I already used this uh, for these two small fields around and the more I drive this tractor king the more I love it this thing is amazing I just kind of wish it had a front uh, three-point hitch versus just the back but I'll take it this thing does amazing work especially with this plow attachment so, I do love it. I haven't really done too much else over here. We have our little mower. Uh, this guy's similar to the equipment we're using already. Um, where that's, I believe that's designed to kind of pull every, all the junk and whatnot away from the plants. So that way we can kind of mulch it up. At least that's what I'm going with. So we do have our own... Uh, fuel trailer over here. We don't have any fuel in it currently. I haven't got, come over with the pickup yet to do anything with that. Oop. Did not mean to do that just yet. Yeah, like I said, uh, like I mentioned, we don't have any of the vines in the building anymore. And since we don't have any over here, we did kind of level things out a little bit more. Or not really leveled, but made them a little bit smoother. Because when coming around here, this was a kind of steep drop right here at the one point. Because I had a nice flat area for the vines that were growing up here. And now it's nice and smooth. So you don't have to be too careful. I mean, you do have to be careful regardless. It is gravel road, but yeah. I'm trying to think of what else I have. As we cycle through all the equipment that I currently own. Of course, we're back over here. Um, okay. Yeah, I forgot to move these guys over here. So, the 4755, I can't remember if I had that one before or not, but we have tanks on it now. That we can put seed, um, fertilizer, or anything like that. But I ended up going buying this seeder as well. This one kind of does almost everything. This one does mostly like the seeding part of it. Um, let's see here. Where is that at? So planter, you can kind of see everything that it does. Usually that would be one that you'd basically be stuck with corn, sunflowers, that kind of thing. But this one can even do beets, um, potatoes, Hell, sugar cane, cotton, um, and then the cedar that we I was just on basically does these kind of plants, but it also does the rye and the alfalfa, which I kind of like to think of, you know, putting that down kind of like for the winter time, um, just kind of like a cover crop type of deal. Maybe be able to get a, a you know, if I decide I want to take it take a field and not really put an arable crop in that we might be able to get direct benefits from, you know, something like this. I know, I believe the alfalfa is one that we can cut and bale and sell it that way. I'm not sure, but we're going to figure out along the way. <laughs> but yeah, this one is kind of more so the way I'm going to use it is be able to put some of our uh, cover crops down. So... Uh, do I have anything else that's new? I think I showed that guy to you 
guys before. I do need to actually get this planter out. Well, I need to move it so I can actually connect to it. I don't know why it's just shoved against that, but there we go. Because these, some of the plants that I've put down or have seeded already, I believe I am going to need some fertilizer applied. So, while we're thinking about it, this is our where we stand on pH. Uh, you can kind of see <laughs> some of the spots where um, we had removed, uh, we plowed, on, plowed in the grass, basically. So that's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on and adjust things as necessary. Uh, that just might be areas that I just need to go through and uh, lime, but I might do that. Well, considering aside from one, well, grass is in 125, but these other ones that I did that with. Um, oh, yeah, and I got to redo the soil information for these to deal with. What I've already... Hi, Cotton. He just about jumped on my lap. Um, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Cotton is my Bichon Frise. He's a white, fluffy dog. That may be, you know, 15 pounds soaking wet. And then he is fully grown. Um, the other one that I have is like a 17 or 18 year old Toy Fox Terrier. She's up there in age. I'll put it that way. Um... I think she was three or four when I first met her. I think it was in 2009. Something like that. She was at least a couple years old then. And she's still up and kicking for the most part. She's, uh, she's a fighter. <laughs> Considering almost every time I get near her or startle her, she likes to try to take a nip at me. No different than when I first met her, and she nipped at my goatee, my, at my beard. So, nutri nutrient, nitrogen, <laughs> jeez, um, I definitely want to get uh, nitrogen spread on some of these fields, well, at least 116, um, uh, though, putting the manure down on these two, once I get everything uh, cultivated in, should definitely help with that. So that is the plan. We're going to use that one trailer, fill it up with nitrogen, and go about it once we get everything cultivated. So that's the plan. And as you can see here on these two fields, you can see clearly the original outline of these fields. Uh, that's the exception there because that was part of the original. I just had to go back through and replow some parts that I missed or our helper missed. One of those two. And... Uh, but you can see kind of where we have added, which I think is kind of cool. Same with over here. We do have this indent here, but you can still... And that's a stripe where we started planting the wheat, so... <laughs> Oops! But... Yeah, that's kind of where we stand right now on this map. Nothing too crazy. Like I said, we are heading into winter. And I keep forgetting about this 136 field up here. Aren't we looking... Uh, it's soybeans, so it doesn't really need much nitrogen anyway. I always forget about that. And uh, no crazy additions yet, though. Excuse you, phone. We do have a spot kind of right up here that's open next to this field that I am planning on putting like a... Oh, and I should own that. Let me double check. I do. So, the 69 part, um, there, it's kind of like a little spot where maybe there was a house or just a building from the intended, that was intended to be there by the original author or maker of this map. Yeah, author. Lovely. <laughs> so... I'm probably going to put a shop or just a shed. I'm not sure which. Uh, maybe it might be a shop that's also a shed. As long as it kinda, I can find a building that fits there, that kind of fits the area, uh, if that makes sense. 
that's the idea. Basically, to kind of keep certain pieces of equipment. Maybe, it, you know, because I, well, I do have a little bit more room in that shed now at the vineyard itself. And that, I don't know if I want to make that, put a uh, processing building there for the uh, olives or not. You know what? Since we're thinking about it, let's take a look. Because I actually want to see what's available for. Um, this is where you go to put your orchid. Or orchards. I keep wanting to say orchids, but that's like a different plant entirely. But yeah, you have your vineyard pack, uh, olives and grapes. So apparently there's an apple tree with factory, which I just see a tree. So let's go over here. I'm kind of curious to see what we can get. It might just be that we put that we find something that just processes it. Uh, may not even be anything too crazy. Maybe it just makes oil out of it. Then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, I really don't know. Okay, so that's the factory. So. Okay, so if I wanted to do like an apple tree vineyard, which actually that might not be too bad to put over here. Maybe kind of sort of. And the funny thing is a lot of these kind of processing plants kind of looks very similar to one another because that looks almost identical except for the sign on the very front. Whoa. Sorry, I have a, uh, one of the mods that I have allows us to zoom in really far. That's a pallet company. It's bakery. Bale chipper. Beekeeping. And I gotta be careful because apparently I still have some mods in my folder that don't like me very much, so... Actually, what I'm going to quickly do is we're going to do a quick hard save before we go any further. Because I want to make sure that we, uh, <laughs> if we had come across one that uh, doesn't work right, at least I don't have to go back too far. I mean, I forgot about the crude oil stuff. I think that's stuff that I found... Um, somewhere online. I haven't actually used it yet. I think I've tried it on a map. Uh, but I didn't really get too far before something happened. <laughs> and that's a death production. That's, uh, comes from water and urea. Which, I don't have any cattle to get urea. Extended oil plant. Ooh. And this, we can actually put corn, sunflowers, uh, what is that? Canola? Yeah, canola and soybeans and olives. So we may have to find a spot to put this. Because if I can take some of my... I forgot that this is a horse paddock that I own. For some reason, I thought it was cattle, but it's horses. Um, do I actually? This may not be a bad spot over here. Natural oils. Oop. Let's see here. All right, so that looks like it should be the back of the building. Let's, uh, yeah, okay. And we have plenty of money for this, so I'm not too concerned about that. Actually, that looks good, just like that. Let's take a look around the entire building. Uh, 
All right. Um, I just want to do something real quick here. Let's make a little path. There we go. Um, give me a minute or two. I'm, I want to see what I can do with this real quick. Kind of make right, it look so a little I bit better. I think I got enough to make it look a little better. So when you first pull in, you're going to see, obviously, you got left or right with the speed limit sign and then a light above. Just kind of help, help you see things. We've kind of widened this a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to make that a little bit better that way. So we do have a little bit of parking for our employee or whoever else if I decide to drive up here. Um, we have access to drop off our stuff to be processed and then this is going to be where we can pick it up. Apparently my dog sees something outside that he's whining about so it might be about time for me to get off of here and take him outside and pay some attention to him but that's kind of where we stand right now. Just kind of detailing things. I did add a couple things in here, kind of make it show that it is being used, and I still am not a big fan of the way they set that up, but it is what it is. So, and I put it on in there a little crooked. Oh well. What's done is done, and it's also not attached. Uh, and I also threw on a couple extra lights because I know we do have some of these here, but I do like to be able to see where I'm at if we end up coming over here in the middle of the night, as well as some solar panels to help kind of offset any any power so from the air since we're in this view you can kind of see just how massive we've made this field alone and then this one was pretty big to begin with we've just kind of added to it yeah so i kind of follow this little creek bed hill thing i try to stay on top of that instead of going into that you can see just how big we've made our our uh, oil uh, olives. Keep I have oil on the mind. I'm sorry. Uh, olive field as well as our uh, additional grape field, grape yard, vineyard, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, and then from the air, we just have this tiny little spot. Ooh, I did not show you guys. It's not really high on my list at the moment. So this is a little pad that I'm referring to. I haven't done anything to it yet, uh, but I'm gonna level it out. Probably put a building, maybe two, along with the gas pump uh, type of setup over here. So that way, when we're over here, we don't have to go back to the field, our farmyard, and uh, do have to refuel or anything like that. Ooh, sorry. Had a uh, big stretch. Just randomly show up. Anyway, uh, we're going to call the video there, guys. So as always, if you happen to like what you see or catch yourself watching more than one of my videos, please do us both a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. That bell will let you be notified of every single video I post and not just select you here and there. If you guys happen to see some new pieces of equipment that I didn't mention and you're curious about, just let me know. That's kind of why I'm walking around like I am. Um... <laughs> Anyway, guys, if you made it this far in the video, I do want to say that I thank you, that I greatly thank you and appreciate each and every single one of you. As I get my words jumbled up in my head, they may not come out right. So, I, yeah. It's my day off from my paying gig, so it, it is what it is. <laughs> you, you get the guy you get that you get. So, yeah. Anyway, I uh, hope each and every single one of you have a fantastic end of your week. And we will catch you in the next episode. So with all that being said, guys, take care. Peace.